whole lot of topics to talk about here. We saw this spillover. We were meant to do an arm summit on Monday, and we had very few topics proposed. Um, everybody wanted to listen in about PG. <laughs> Nobody really wanted to seem to talk about it. Um, <laughs> but we have, we have enough people here to have some sort of sensible discussion. And I think that the major, unfortunately, Ian is not here. A couple of others not here, but I mean the one topic that I think we have going on right now is: Do we want to move the conference out? Or how do we, do we want to move the conference out of the kernel tree? Back. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Uh, <laughs> well, just let me echo that. Or you know, if we want to move towards that, how do we do it? Um, Besides that, it's, I mean, open floor. I'm not, I don't have an agenda here. I don't have a presentation. Um, we had some good discussion with Eric's this guy a presentation, and we can just keep on going from there. So who wants to go to first go? Mark. So I think that fundamentally, yeah. so I think that in general, we do want to move to the place where we can move the DTs out of the kernel, mm -hmm. but there's a huge body of work still to be done because the vast majority of DTM platforms are still on fully DTM. We still got lots of board code that you can just to move like SMP operations. Mm -hmm. And that's really painful for all the things we So if anything, fundamental requirement I think for any board that we want to have DTM for out of the kernel is no platform code. No what? No platform code. No machine desk. Works with the defaults. I'm not sure how many platforms we have that fulfill that requirement. Hi, Dan. The ones we have have very good upstream. And that's I, don't, I don't think that's really a progressive thing. So, uh, Sorry? I, I don't think that that has to be the case the, the criteria of moving them out. They just need to be stable. Could Which I think yeah. would fall into. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Could we rewind and maybe talk about what the perceived benefits of the So um, it's pretty clear from the last merge window at least that Nina just started to notice the amount of churn. Why are we moving USB out of tree? He is not complaining <laughs> yet. And he's okay with this because he knows, I, I suspect, I, I, I haven't talked to him about it, but I suspect he's okay with it because he knows it's something we're working on and it's something that's going to happen. And he's always said he's okay with that. Um, Just to be believe we're still working on it. <laughs> right. This is, this is his work. We're still working on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but honestly, um, we are hitting a point in time where there's been a good amount of churn. Unfortunately, some of that churn is truly churn. Some of it is a lot of added platform support. We don't have a good place today sit at the SOC and the, the, the developer boards have good coverage. Um, we don't have a place where people can, can throw in, you know, all their derivative boards and just, you know, start collecting those without talking about each other. Uh, so there's some point in that. There's another tangential issue with this, and that's something that came up in the last couple of weeks. We, we do have unstable bindings. We have drivers that are in staging. And in particular, Russell is having some issues with this, right? Where he wants to work on the bindings and not lock them in. That's a rare few that are. It's fairly few, yes. That are under binding staging directory. There's like three or four, I think. But it's it's because we just established the directory, too. It's still that same problem for other providers when we introduce new bindings. It's kind of hard to put that that I said a patch and yeah. now it's API. Yeah. Yeah. So I think there needs to be some of the to be before it's uh, good. Yeah. So does everyone know that there is a device tree binding repository already? It's auto generated. It's essentially it filters out all the device trees and keeps the commit history from the kernel of those. Um, there's other projects like Uboot that they have added some device trees in to their repository. Who knows what's contained in them because it's not really reviewed by anyone. We want to move on to whatever the kernel community has. Yes, yes. Yeah. So that's the important thing. And like Bearbox uh, maintainers have express interest in having a repository. I don't know if they added that as a sub module. Um, they were looking at that uh, DSP as well. It's using the Where did you about it? It's uh, on kernel.org. 
because it is still yeah. right. That's the exception, but it's not normally rebased. I think part of the problem why we why it's so hard to extract this in high bank and like come up with bird and a couple of others, like some of the few platforms, they can be considered feature complete. Right? And every other architecture probably. And every other besides ARM. We can um, move out every other architecture. A lot of them at least, yeah. But that's not gonna solve our problem, right? Um, and we there's so many SOCs there still, I mean there's still drivers that get enabled, there's still stuff that happens. We haven't solved any of the iron and new problems yet. All of that is solved, right? And until that is solved, pretty much all SOCs are gonna be charged with that, right? But did you see that slowing down? That's huh? not, did you see that slowing down? Because that's not really something I'm mean, seeing slowing down. I mean, and it's, it's, I don't really see, at this point, the SOCs don't care about that. I don't really see them being completely in the soon. And, and uh, the SOC can you know, keep adding more SOCs, which have more SOCs. More SOCs is one thing. But yeah, but thing is it's still thing. have more substantial differences that require more elaborate bindings or other things like that. Essentially, so you stop working on the older SOCs. It seems like you assume that at some point things will converge. But the new binding but for a new SOC doesn't affect an older SOC, right? And the older device takes an older SOC. Depends. It should depend. Well, the new SOC might you know, probably going to be borrowing some stuff from the older one. We reuse this block, we reuse this other block. Yes, and you can append to the binding if you want to do that. But you cannot revise the binding. That's the whole deal with the old binding. But on a little platform, you're not going to go add to the binding. We can get away with that now. If it's if it's older and you're not changing it, even if it's a mature platform. There aren't many mature platforms that are doing device streaming. This is all the mature platforms are not moving to device streaming. Or if they're moved to device streaming, they're not done with that work by definition of mature, right? Or they're busy. <laughs> 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 um, well, like you mentioned IO and that like uh, audio complex. Yep. It's just been really only recently that uh, um, device to binding was introduced for that. What? No. The audio Maker complex. 2 has device to based audio complex. Yeah, that, well, there's 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 been all audio support forever, and not everything's going to be able to use simple card. Simple card is for really simple hardware. Um, you're even going to get smartphones using that. Right. So, it's, I mean, that, that's, that's just. You can, uh, you can always define machines to pick bindings that doesn't work. So there's no blocker on stable bindings with all here.
thing going on there, but we at least have common belief. Right in the the same tree in other states. Not during development. It comes together in the market now. Right. I mean, when people, when people are testing it, they should be testing it. At least for the main line. At least for the main line. At least for the main line. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. So, <coughs> are we going to try to like, tag them? Whatever we can make into the the whole point was bringing it out of the kernel tree to no longer make it, make it bound to the kernel. Well, I thought so it was just a play game. Should we tag free these zero duplicates? Should we tag duplicate pieces? Well, it I could mean, be synchronized initially. initially. Sorry? It could be synchronized initially. Yeah. Over time. I mean, you boot's going to, as someone just said, you would follow the kernel. No, yeah. Uh, we'll do whatever. We'll do our best work with what the kernel guys are going to be doing, you guys. My kind of follow up there is are people in contact with BSD folks and with VX works? Um, yes. People would like to. And yeah. the whole reason uh, the mailing list is split between device tree, device tree, spec, and device tree it? compiler. Yes. <laughs> 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 new list. Only the basic archives of the new ones. Okay. The split was uh, largely to have a lower volume list that is not a bunch of Linux driver uh, patch series or right. yeah. like this. And we do have some folks from the BSD and VXWorks on these lists. I have no idea. No idea. So I said that's a little worrying, and maybe we need to put an olive branch out there and a couple folks say, hi, would you like to join us? I mean, it, it started because of discussion with those folks. Okay. First up, these are the BSD boots maintain the record. That's the point of Sorry? First up, the BSD MIPS uh, maintain the record. Oh, okay. So here? Uh, not here, but I'm going to use the He's aware of what's going on. There's also the Zen guards that we've had in discussion on previous week, Jackson was from the mining discussions in Boston. They were relatively happy to pick up some of the current Kremlin's findings in addition to the things that we're all using. Because they were all together when it was actually in Iraq and Zen had picked up what they were doing. So while there's not been much, there has been some. I'm guessing we are still missing from the synchronization of the previous AI. I had one contacting me for the admin stuff. Okay. And uh, he just said, oh, how should I know when the, the bindings will be stable and where is that discussed and uh, uh, how could I get the information? Okay. And we didn't know anything about the mailing list or the IRC channel. Do you think it was just him not knowing, or everybody working, nobody else? I'm not so sure, but uh, okay. yeah, he, he was not knowing. He, he was completely requested us that the, uh, the admin device be uh, support for the Okay. But you didn't even know about the new mail list. Yeah, you didn't even know. Well, I should, you know, honestly, if it was not <laughs> that list, I probably didn't see the email. I'm subscribed to it, but I don't remember. Do, do the three ESD guys use the Linux kernel device? Yeah. Uh, they are trying to use kernel device. They are actually actively trying to stay close to what they are using. Are they importing it in, in their project, in their repo, or are they? they are, are I'm not so sure of how it's going to work, but they are compiling it and using the same. Okay. So I was kind of browsing some of the device tree, the previous, one of the previous BSD trees I found had. They're using device trees, but they are currently not at all compatible with our device, Linux device trees. And that's something they know that needs to be reconciled. And that's the problem why I was asked. So they're similar to you, boot in some way. Then. No, they're they're, they're <laughs> much farther off. Yeah. Even further off. Yes. So <laughs> I looked at the, yeah, so I looked at the AM three three five X one two TI seven. So at least I have a vague idea what PT is supposed to mean. It's, okay, the Linux one says this. BSD one says, what? 
And then I was like, okay, I'm not really sure what on earth is going on over here. And one of the things I did see in their code or post somewhere was, we know we have three BSD specific findings in here, and we need to not do that. So, well, I mean, we can we can make it easy for them to work with us, but at the end, it's up to them. To they have, yeah, they have to come work with us, and I see <coughs> that they would like to. I have a comment about <coughs> about that. Um, when we take a driver from BSD, we don't demand that they move it to a separate repository. We are very grateful that we can borrow their driver and use it, but there's no need to demand that from them. I don't see why we need to move. I, okay, well, I'll start by saying I, I don't really see why we need to move this out of the current repository. And yes, I've, I've heard some of the discussions uh, the last time it was posed out on the device tree mailing list, I was one of the people objecting, saying, really, what's the gain for the pain that we're going to have? And I do see pain from my perspective. And I got answers back of, well, other people can use it. Well, if these bindings are stable, they can pull it from our tree, no problem, from Linux kernel. It's only if they're unstable that there's a problem. And we really do want to be stable, so that, that should remove some of that element. Um, Once they're stable, though, the moving out is easy. Once but they're stable, I mean, the point big yeah. Problem once they're stable, what's the point of moving today, them? Exactly. Right? Even though we, we're saying that it's, it's well, well, that's stable. another issue. Then maybe we need to be addressing how do we um, identify what's not stable and move it into the stable position. And we've talked about this before. It yeah. was talked about last su um, summer in Edinburgh, yeah. um, and it seems to be a perpetual problem. It really, has not been solved. But that's orthogonal. That's, I mean, that, that's something that we need to do no matter what. So that's I, not saying why we need to move it out. I think I think we we've, we've solved half of the problem. Essentially, we've said bindings should be stable, and yeah. we're we're trying to, to conform to that. We're working hard. There's some unstable ones. The one yeah. thing that we have not said is you know there will be no new bindings. And as there are new bindings, and as people work on enabling new pieces of IP and their SOCs, because it's not feature complete yet, um, there's churn or changes, right? Yeah. Um, so even though we're saying that the bindings might be stable, the DTSs are not. Definitely not. And that's really the crux of the problem, right? There, there does need to be a, from my perspective, I don't see someone takes a binding or a DTS, either one, just drops it in the tree and it's solid, is, is perfect. That's not the way we develop Linux. What we do is we propose things and we, we mold them and eventually they become what they become. And I don't see why device tree bindings and DTSs should be any different. It seems like there ought to be a playground where we're developing this, we're cooperating, we're seeing what works and what doesn't work. Once you figure it out, then it becomes stable. And, and I think it's important to be able to have that sort of differentiation in a way to transition it from one stage to another very clearly. Okay, for system calls, for example, there's also no playground. Well, the playground is out of three. One system call is acceptable. Yes, but system calls are very rare, and you can afford to spend endless debate out of tree before you <laughs> get anywhere near tree. DTS, and that's one of their problems with DTS is it. Bindings are, are almost easier to move out, right? 
documentation, device tree binding. Yeah. If we do that and tell people it has to land in the repo, <coughs> versioning isn't really an issue in that sense because it's mostly documentation. If we do that and for now leave the DTS as being a file tree, the next step is essentially, well, the next step could be to spin up a new repo that's empty. We don't try to mirror anything over, we don't try to copy anything over, but we start populating stable device trees. And over time, once they're, they have enough contents, they have the same contents as the internal one, so we'll move it. And we'll make sure that essentially people will have to test. What what is the value? <coughs> what is the value of moving the bindings out of the kernel source tree? So it, it gives a neutral ground for people to because this is really standard. We're, there's some talk. <coughs> it's unfortunate the grant is not here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's yeah. some talk about essentially spinning up some sort of standard box right. to standardize all of this. Right. And having that out of tree would be useful then, because it's it's neutral ground. And we're really trying to describe hardware, not Linux kernel use of hardware. Not all bindings are necessarily going to make sense in the Linux kernel. For example, taking it back to the all winner stuff, okay, so for memory controller initialization, that's likely going to be happening in bootloader, where I need to have some sort of binder there so that you can be told rather than have that be built in necessarily. But we have to post the binder for that in version of the kernel. So taking the, the very selfish personal standpoint, that's just added overhead, ossification, pain. Dealing with the standards body is a whole lot more work than submitting something into a reviewed Linux kernel device tree community. I, I'm not looking forward to that process where I don't see a whole lot of value in there. I see a lot more just time and, and pain. I don't disagree. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so what's the value? There, there has to be a, a positive value to, to compensate for the pain. Uh, either some other community is contributing lots of bindings that we wouldn't have contributed that maybe eventually we, will, we want, and, and they're helping. They're, they're part of the solution. But if it's just pain and no gain, why do it? I think it would be a lightweight standards body as opposed to like AC. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there is pain regardless. Because it's moving the pain and there may be an increase in the pain. But yeah. it at least delineates the two. But we're not magically growing bodies at the same time, yeah. right? So the same people will be doing the same work. And it only takes <coughs> So today we have a fairly well, we sort of have a defined way of getting bindings in, right? And if we do a standard body, it can be lightweight until we find the first stickler that happens to be a standard body that makes every letter size the same. Same is true in kernel. At the moment, we don't have enough people to review the 
Some people would argue that's moving backwards. Some people would argue that x86 ACPI is a royal thorn on our sides, and not having that control of all that information is just makes our life worse. So why move into that world where things are worse, where we lose control, we lose? We're trying to make the argument for ACPI here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not a big fan. Let me tell you of of no, the firmware. start adding so fix-ups into the kernel.
they'll ship an unstable IP, and therefore we can't trust the device to the typical devices. So how do we get around that? Right. And so I asked about this. I asked about a couple of related things in say six, eight, uh, twelve months ago at this point. Part of the answer was there is an expectation that if a vent, a hardware vendor is going to ship on board a device tree, they're going to do it in a way that it can be upgraded later. And there is also an expectation, and this was mentioned either by or agreed by at least one of the generic commodity distro folks, uh, yes, we understand that we might still have to ship an updated device tree because we won't know, we can't know necessarily that yes, the board has a new, better device tree on it, therefore when we're shipping our kernel as with this, that, and everything else, we're also going to include the good device tree for this. They should ship it with a new kernel. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> uh, I'm not arguing in favor of taking things out. I'm just yeah. saying what I kind of recall to some discussions a while ago, and it seemed like even commodity distro folks were, at the time, if anybody here speak better than I can, please do. At least it seemed like at the time there was agreement slash understanding that there would still be a need to ship device, device trees for every device that they support. For device tree, some amount of device trees <coughs> as needed. As needed. So I, I, I think that there's also some expectation that if board vendors are I, I care in any way, they will be doing something like making sure that it's, you know, that currently active systems work with Windows and they'll be testing anything else you get a similar thing where people would uh, say, I'm doing this because I care about the latest Ubuntu uh, release, and therefore the, the, bind, the, bind, the thing they're shipping will at least do Ubuntu, or whatever it is that they actually care about. So there's some expectation that it, the, for people who care, people who don't care, it's not they're just going to ignore this and whatever. But for people who care, there's some expectation that in most directions, there'll be some effort to maintain synchronization, because both the board vendor and the distro are getting something out of the out of the deal, you know, the, the, the board members get to sell a desktop to think for whatever that they can install such and such an OS on, and the OS vendor is getting an OS that they can ship on such and such set of hardware. Yeah, so the place that some, some subset of yeah. vendors that might decide that they want to ship something and we yeah. of course walk on a stable binding essentially. Yeah, or yeah, or, or and there'll be a bunch of other people who go, well, no, I don't care, go oh, away, I'm just doing this. So allowing people to ship a stable binding is a good feature. <coughs> and then you would say, hey, maybe you need to submit a binding to somebody for stability. You say, I'm about to ship this. Do you guys agree that this is okay to be stable? And you know, that everything in it is okay. And it becomes accepted. I don't know. I mean, I'm, maybe that's a ridiculous notion. I would come up with some really incredible, clever prize. Somebody who can document a case for manufacturing they're not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, even even with the API, they're talking about you know. Yeah, you're going to have to update your firmware to you know whatever. But we don't care. You're going to talk to the vendor about it. And we don't have the same situation because the economy is not the same. Um, it feels to me like actually repeating the uh, one of the uh, basic mistakes. Uh, we have vendors who create firmware, they have bugs in the firmware, and display them with a single operating system. And then we have to deal with the bugs inside the inside of the external because we can't operate a firmware, we can't change it. And now we're trying to uh, do exactly the same with BT and have it stable and try to work around the basic problem instead of actually forcing the device vendors to make it readable with BT. So I think that's a very good thing to talk about today that we were talking about. RPC actually has perfect exception because they suck the device tree out of regular open firmware and there's a bunch of them that are buggy. They actually fix that, then build a flat device tree out of that and boot the out of that. So, I mean, it exists. They have to, have to do it because that's just the way it works. Like uh, some Apple Macs did not have a unit address for the CPU, so there was no way of, to distinguish the four CPUs that exist. Uh, 
device type. Don't worry about long trail, I think they've all been sent to scrap here. <laughs> I'm serious. I mean, we'd have to probably do the same thing with the kind of desktop in this case. I mean, we probably have cases where the vendor isn't going to want to play. So, part of this could essentially be, I mentioned starting an empty repo to just add a device to it. If you had not collected the latest known good device tree for any other platform, it could have been like a ship list, or it could have been something that ship list that takes your time. You have one place to go to get it. That's not the kind of, for whatever purpose. Um, and I don't know, would that help? Would that help? I actually would have a. Distro somewhere to go get the. I, I, have, I actually would like to suggest, this is something that's going to bring up, that whenever there's a new binding and a new driver that a working or in development <laughs> actual DTS file for some board in the world that's uh, possible to get be submitted with it. Because I see all these drivers coming in, I see all these bindings coming in, and it's like, well, what does the real DTS look like that you're testing against? And the real DTS often is not anything I could possibly imagine from what they've they've exposed. So, and so that's a very missing piece in trying to test and understand these submissions and, and review patches. It's, I find on, that real frustrating. The way it works on ARM, and this is you know an elephant in, in the room in many ways, is that's not unique to device trees. You have all these vendors upstreaming drivers yeah. that you can't build and use with a mainline kernel. You took it out of their Android tree that's you know on 3.4, they make it build and they upstream the driver because it's what it's supposed to do. You can't do it. <laughs> um, if it can't get built, I mean, then the review process failed. There's a bunch of vendors that do that, right? Or, or then the, I mean, the other case you get is you ask them to make API changes to update to the, their vendor tree to whatever mainline is. Um, I'm pretty convinced some of the stuff I've got in, in my subsystem Z running on any system, I think they've just ten build tested it. And I can't tell from the text that it's not working. Yeah. But hey, it doesn't work when uh, your chip doesn't work. Eh? It's a wider it's a wider problem than DTS actually. Yeah. But but <laughs> that's a critical thing for me to be able to review and test patches. Yes. And to be able to use them and say this is crap or this is really good. Because we tend to see the device tree contents being added. It's the world I'm living in right now. Okay. That's exactly it. So it's the line the the mainline kernel is never feature complete for a platform, and the DTS tends not to be because everyone is continually adding to it. Yeah. How, it's, how it's, do we fix that for DTS on the train? Well, so then the stable one would be trailing black, and every now and then it would be It would not be stable, it would be only one. But that would also be Another sort of positive, <laughs> the major <laughs> negative comment really? at the end. <laughs> sure. So, so I was asking why why move this stuff out of out of the kernel, and I understand that one justification for it is is all the server manufacturers who wanted this really common platform and this nice solid static API. Um, and, and I understand that perspective. And again, the um, the people like the Red Hats and Ubuntu or whatever who want an easy to to deal with API. But the problem with that is that to make that work, you really need a platform description or a platform requirements. And that's where the ARM servers are going now, right? That and moving to ACPI, which means that, in a sense, they're a non sequitur in this whole discussion. They're not all ACPI. They're not all going to be ACPI. It, it's a spectrum, right? You have the, right, the enterprise right. servers on one end, which they're saying most of them seem to be talking about ACPI. 
Yeah. And then you have phones and tablets at the other end, I would say. Yeah, I'm in the phones and, and tablets in, world. And somewhere in the middle you have, you know, the network appliances yeah. and the little NASes. And, yeah. And, you know, but even if they're device tree, they can't just expect one kernel to work on all these devices unless there's some sort of platform specification. No, that's not necessarily true. There is a platform specification to some extent. How verbose that platform specification <laughs> is going to be. I mean, we have a CPU which has an architecture. We have yeah, and in the world of SOCs, Oh, yeah, the but standardization but is so non-standard. Sure. The but the base no. the base expectations are so the, wild. I mean, there is no base expectation. Yeah, it's so like your so SOC is what it is. Yeah, so in my view, for <laughs> ARM64, the way we're building stuff up, we're not having board code from the start. Right. The base expectations there are you have CPUs, you have memory. That's pretty much it. As long right. as we can get from there to your drivers initializing. Right. You don't have all the SOC crap yeah. in those drivers. Yeah. So I, I, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> it's an entirely true. different world. Well, so there, is, there are problems that are not solved on ARM64 yet. So yeah. There are no mobile platforms on ARM64, so, upstream yet at yeah. least. So and all the nitty gritty details that are last bit that nobody upstream on 32 bit either has not been solved on 64 bit. Yeah. I think the point I was trying to get to is, in that case, there are a subset of bindings that we need to be stable and not oh, change. Yeah. So there's oh, memory, I CPUs, yes. things like contiguous memory allocator, reserve regions, the kind of thing that you yeah. don't want to change in a backwards incompatible fashion. Yeah. No matter what, we, we want stability. I mean, we want to get good, solid, stable bindings. That's a great goal yeah. across the entire spectrum. Yeah. So we might not get yeah. that for everything, but for those yeah. that we can get that, those where the changes are of zero value, where it's changing the name of a property because it happens <laughs> yeah. to be slightly more. Yeah, don't do uh, that. It, it, it's completely useless. Yeah, and that's just useless churn. And okay, it makes it look slightly nicer, but it's just historical legacy that we should yeah. just appreciate. At that point, sure, there'll be the vast majority of SOC support is not going to become stable. That might be the case, but we can get that common core stable, and that's a useful thing. That I, th I think most of it will become stable. It's just how long it's going to take to get there. And there's always going to be new stuff coming in in addition. But, I mean, stuff that's four years old should be pretty darn stable, you know, if, if we did it, if we're developing correctly and, and reviewing correctly and testing correctly. Part of the problem is that there isn't a, a platform that's upstream, device stream or not. Everybody, every vendor has a huge backlog on actually upstreaming. And for most vendors, that means they also have a huge backlog on stable bindings and device tree contents because some of them still have board files, right? And they're, they're yeah. yeah. So um, until we start to see more catch up on that, which in some cases might happen, in some cases it might never happen. I think we're deluding ourselves in thinking how much stuff is actually stable. I think there's a very small percentage of stuff that we can assume is stable, like the market say CPUs probably but where the line stops. Because the way, the way like Thomas was saying, the way these SOC vendors work, you get you get a little bit of information from the SOC vendor and you do it, then you find out they didn't quite tell you the whole story. And maybe somebody from the inside then tells you a little bit more. And the way the kernel evolution process works never stable. It's never been stable the way we've done anything to, uh, today. And to expect it to be any more stable because we're going to have to react because we're dictating stable bindings and we're doing it ourselves. So can I think you have to limit what you put into the device tree. Yeah. yeah. You get more than that on PCI. So we, you get the address ranges, down, the interrupts. When we first started down the device tree path, that was the initial idea. Was we're, we're just going to describe, describe the basic stuff that you get from PCI, the, the base addresses, IRQs, and DMAs, and not try to describe all this other stuff. But we very quickly went to, with, with various forms of uh, um, coercion to uh, do everything from pins to clocks to regulators to all this type of stuff. And, I, and that made, maybe that was a mistake. Maybe expecting that any of that stuff can actually be stable. Well, I mean, the Both goal has been to avoid 
the, the original goal of all of this was not to be able to produce a new SOC without making changes to the current. But we wanted to get to a point where you could do a new board derivative of a development board without touching the line of sequence. You should not have to touch the current. Yeah, that was the initial goal, and I think that's a great goal. But we, we're, we're now describing all sorts of SOC internals that we're yeah. expecting. To because they leak out of the board level. Yeah. That's the problem. Well, so, 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 we're, we're describing purely self-internal devices, entirely device free. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the entire, the entire self, you know, self, we're not allowed to code, or people aren't allowed to code for the self. So the self is entirely described in device tree. And that ends up in the board DTS file because it's all one file at the end of the day. Wow. Or DTB rather, it's all one file at the end of the day. Yeah, but the way, it, I mean, over time, we realize you can do, you can do a similar SSDs without doing changes. Right? It's still going to be something. We've added one more requirement on top. It's not just that I can do a derivative board without having to modify the kernel. It's I can do a derivative board and it's always going to have works yeah. and to be not tied to the kernel anymore. That's different from just being able to say, I'm going to take this kernel version and I'm going to take the base DT with my email board and whack it around how my custom board is and it's going to work. And I only had to work in the DT. That's cool. That's so cool. Got, that's that's neat. There is there is inevitably a point where you're going to require a new kernel version with some variation that didn't previously exist. The key point is that that old DTS should still work on that new kernel in addition to the new system. I've heard the word should in that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Go look at x86. Go ahead. look at. I'm no, but I'm just asking. Has has anybody actually successfully taken a device tree for a piece of hardware? From say the 312 and moved it to 313 without touching anything, and it hasn't ever worked for anybody. Yeah. Well, I mean that that, that kind of stuff the, does happen. I'll say the hardware we booted a uh, second generation chip using a kernel developed for the first generation chip. It's a stock Ubuntu kernel only with the device tree change. Okay. Now we eventually had to go make kernel changes to enable uh, concurrent DMA, but we can work around that in the device tree until those changes in the kernel were done. But, but, the, but you then you just said you just changed your device tree to get new functionality. You changed just the device tree, that's good. So you don't have to be able, only have to modify the kernel for new functionality. Yeah. That's okay. Part of the problem there too, I think, is that you know that Calzina chip was really designed for like server use cases where <coughs> Yeah. And I think that could work, but until that happens. And we don't have a 
single one of those guys here. Right? So what does it bring us? I mean, if we have it doesn't bring us anything, but it brings them something. Uh, yeah. It's something they're probably get them off our back. Well, yeah, I don't think. <laughs> I think we can solve their problem. They should solve their own problem. We can help them as they, yeah. as as we can, and, and by living the scope, we're agreeing on what we're going to say is stable and what's not stable. But we shouldn't have to solve. I don't, I don't think we should be solving that problem. I I, 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 well, I think the sort of pitch profound. The, the, the issue tries to explain. Well, you're giving us nothing. Um, so I mean, so, we, we, I would like some of the distro guys are saying we're not going to use DP period, right? Yeah, the, 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 those disregards are um, special. <laughs> uh, but but I, I think one, one thing that would help a lot would be um, a way, a runtime of, um, or a way of splitting out the board specific stuff from the chip description um, at the DTB level. So the distros could um, shift uh, their. OMAP or whatever, or Exynos or whatever, um, DTSI, which is up to date and accurate with the kernel, and the board, uh, and then separately have the, uh, the board specific stuff. So the DTS would be off the other uh, DTS or DTB? Well, yeah, no, uh, uh, so, so you can get the same distribution, so you can replace, uh, arrange things so that you have the same amount of sharing in the DTB as you currently do with the DTS, DTS and DTSI. So if, 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 with, with my distro hat on, that seems to be the major difficulty we've got. Is like the, the, the board specific stuff is relatively stable. There's not like it's not churning in any or, or difficult to describe anything like the same way. Whereas the soft stuff, we're not constantly going, oh my god, here's this new thing, let's enable it. Or, 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 you know, there's some some pretty tight the board stuff ties in pretty tightly though to the. Uh, it could be actual SSC, like, you know, I need to turn on this power domain or something, you know. Yes, yeah, so see, you need, but that stuff is easier to identify and make. So, like, if you, you know that your connect, your um, I2C controller is connected to the I2C device, what power domain this stuff is, it makes it. I guess that's true, that, that actually, yeah, that's all on the, in the exactly, 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 so the, the, the external interfaces, you, I mean, the, the I can point, is the biggest I, yeah, so I, I, I can point to the pin box, I can see it's physically present. You know, if you can see it in the um, circuit diagram, then it should be, it definitely needs to be somewhat stable if you're going to be able to achieve this. But describing the internals of the soft, that's. Referencing a well, clock and referencing pin boxes are the, thing, the biggest things you need. Yeah. So, in my understanding, a part of the generic distro problem is they don't want to have to worry about how do we get the correct device tree for this board because end users aren't going to want to have to type in 600 things to make sure that they load to just the correct device tree. They want it to just work. It's more and general than that, they don't want to have to worry about what boards are running on. Right. It's all kernels. They want to. They want to be able to say, here, end user, you can grab this, you know, Derek, uh, SD card, just put the door or whatever on, pop it in your machine, and it's going to work. And it's going to load the correct device tree for whatever hobbyist board they happen to put it in. And that's the hard part. It's okay, I think, if you're saying, well, the vent dist commodity distro kernel is going to spits out 100 device trees, that's not a problem if the correct device tree is always going to well, I don't think they want to be in that situation. They I don't think they boot a newer board than when they sponsor this or release. Yeah, if you can get the device tree to already exist somewhere and have a reasonable expectation of, okay, gee, this is putting out my T. I had its brand new spin of a beagle bone, but it's pretty much the same thing as an existing one. Therefore, you can have a reasonable assumption that it's going to work as opposed to gee, this is a brand new chip we just spit out. It's completely different. Therefore, you need a new kernel anyway. It's never going to just yeah, work. That's why it's still aligning to the brand new. Right. That's but if it's just okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. if it's new derivative <laughs> form, it would be okay if you can somehow say, well, the device tree is not going to exist from somewhere else. But the only reason for the device tree not being stable in that case is if that new board is at something that we need to that really If there's some way to say, here's how Here's how we expect the hardware folks to have included a stable device tree somehow, and you know, 
get at it and upgrade it and so on. Yeah, but the event is done shit mainland kernels nowadays, they ship BSPs. So they okay. keep shipping BSPs with uh, device trees that are completely unstable. They will have bindings that exist on <coughs> the drivers that they have inside of BSP. So they will ship because a bug with a TV with completely unstable bindings. Putting on my TI hat, we try, but you know, we have to make compromises between, okay, here's what's upstream and it works, and here's what we just put on the stranded board, and we're trying to make it work upstream, and we're trying to do the right things, but we can't just wait for forever. Yes. We need to enable this hardware. Yes. Yeah, that's understandable, but that means that we will have to evolve in the device that is unstable to flash the board. So as soon as we want to move to new mainland kernel, well, which is why I actually, which is why one of the other cans of worms needs to be opened if we're going to say we expect hardware to ship the device tree is please, for the love of God, other people give good best practices for how us poor hardware companies should try to do things right, because God knows what will happen if we should leave it up to us. <laughs> <laughs> Can I? make an observation which is to kind of go back to the beginning which is the you know Olaf mentioned is the motivation at least the first motivation for removing the binding out of the kernel was to basically pacify the NIS preemptively it sounds like so if we take that as like a pill then that is a much simpler problem than the whole like state of mind NIS that it basically turns into a version of the problem to understand the mind. So it seems to me that, that is a, a much more restrictive that also a slightly sillier problem? He's tired of looking at all the stupid churns, so we're going to put it somewhere else so he doesn't have to see yeah. it. Yeah, that's that's really a that. silly area. Yeah. Yeah. There's <laughs> also a technical reason besides this, as that we have impending ARM64 platforms coming out that are going to probably share part of their DTS with ARM32. A whole lot. Or power freescale power PC platforms. Well, he's, just, ARM. he's moving them inside the DTS. So, <laughs> so either we, oh, we have a the big reorg of device trees in the kernel that would really piss off the kernel. No, a move, a move is transparent to Linus. As long as you make it a clear move in Git, yeah. he sees it as a move he doesn't and see not it when noise. He burns, but he sees it when he does the release. He sees it at, we had a top level. Yeah, wasn't directory. wasn't Linus's churn issue that people were making changes that led to merge conflicts? Yeah. And if we're talking about DTSs and bindings, then our churn should be isolated to those areas and there should not be merge conflicts on the same scale as what was frustrating Linus back then. I think that a lot of what, what came out of moving toward device tree is that the ARM architecture cleaned up a whole lot of things, became a whole lot more um, unified and shared stuff a whole lot better. And I think even if device tree never happened, Linus would be a whole lot happier with ARM in his current state than he was in the yeah. churn days. But it's about to get worse. We have people now trying to merge device tree patches. For a while, we had device tree patches going, you know, DTS patches going into various trees, and it got painful. And we sort of pulled it in and said, please merge through us. And then we have a pretty strong movement. So when you say device tree, again. are you talking about kernel source code? DTS files. DTS, DTS files. People so people would submit a network driver through Dave Miller and update their board DTS for it. And that okay. would complicate because we also had something going on. So um, should we move back to more centralized submittals? Well, that's what we submittals? did for a long time. I mean, now there's should we pull back into that again? To try to, to break out of that again. But, um, because that's a really good point. We're talking a lot about hypotheticals here, but Linus might or might not like. I'm, I'm just going to go find out where his head is at, Yeah. because um, that's going to make a big difference, whether this is something we need to worry about. Yeah. If he doesn't necessarily care about it, then, then why should we? Yeah. Except maybe for the reasons of profit. In sharing. Well, even sharing, I mean, you could define a way that we can specify, but today you can do it good, right? Well, what if you never read it, so from now on to the point, yeah. Do what we already did for some source files, which is dot dot. Like no, not dot dot. <laughs> <laughs> but you can have a good pass, right? Like yeah, dash i, I equals. So you can have arm slash something or arm slash something. Yeah. Without moving the files. But we might as well move the files. But I don't know. 
I have a bike shed discussion. What? I have a bike shed discussion. Pink. Um, pink. So, so I was gonna. Green. <laughs> purple. I like purple. So, <laughs> um, I, I came up with some scripts to scan the device tree proc file system back when it was in the proc file system, and compare the nodes to the devices that were bound to drive. Well, it's basically, I was looking for what device tree nodes were not bound to drivers kind of as a debugging aid. It's like, oh, gee, maybe I forgot to configure this driver in. This will help me figure that out really quickly. Um, and then we went to the SysFS file system, and I submitted another patch. And then Grant came back and said, oh, you can do that already, and came back with some other scripts. So now I have some scripts that I'd like to put somewhere everyone can use to help debug their device tree issues when they're debugging either configuration. <coughs> so it could be sysadmin, it could be driver developers, whatever. Um, so I, I came back and asked Greg KH, well, where's a good place for this? Scripts tools, uh, scripts device trees, scripts o OF. So there's the bike shedding. Where should these be submitted into? It says that in test case. It's, 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 not, a te it's not testing whether something's broken. It's, it's something to help you find out what you did wrong. Or, Okay, so there's a test whether your config is so scripts or tests. Or is there a where's the, where, a where are test cases? Test case directory, yeah. Okay, so I'll, I'll look there. Yeah. Okay, I'll try submitting there, and then people can bike shed on the yeah, email list. Bike shed. <laughs> cool. 
Anything else? Anybody? Uh, yeah, so we not only have shown in, in the SLG, also in the depth of this. Uh, recently yeah. we were wondering, now we have a perfect description of the hardware, it should be possible to generate the, the config file from the DPS. Why well, not the red thing? Not great hardware. Because for years people have been writing scripts for how do I create a config file for my PC while scanning whatever. Yeah. If we device to it, it's, it should be easier. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yes. One thing that actually I'd like to talk about if anyone else wants to care about it is um, what to do with data that is not really specifically hardware data. And uh, people talked about, you know, we use the term config tree for this in the past. I think it's going to wind up in the device tree one way or the other. It has been. We've been saying that we are saying that. Like CMA and. Well, I'm thinking of even things like what we have now, like CPU correct. Right? Like that's, generally speaking, not a property of the actual SOC itself. Thermal constraints for your platform. Yeah, exactly. It's so this is property because it's characterized as properties. Characterizations. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I mean, that's that the part underlying part of it. Uh, the example I remember we're talking about before was, uh, you know, clock configurations and you know what clocks should be what parents and you know that are a combination of the hardware and the current platform configuration you have in software, right? We but agreed to that, but nobody did the work yet, I think. Right, yeah. Oh, okay. But I mean that, that was the, the so example that it's definitely not oh, describing yeah. just yeah. the hardware. Yeah. So I mean even for thermal and stuff like that, uh, <coughs> yeah at some point it should probably be the so are we going to kind of separate that stuff out into sort of separate configuration files, or what's the plan? I'm sorry. I think the thing we said on clock was that we were going to keep it with it, spread on pretty much a clock at a time. So it's part of the SAC file? Well, I don't know what discussion there was or you agreed to. I don't actually remember. Well, was submitted, I didn't like. Okay. And it sounds like you're going to put in the device tree because it actually makes things worse with uh, having m many, many different files, because if you take your thermal, for example, it's on an edge, you can have to take the files for the environment to go work your plan. Well, in reality, it's quite likely that you might want to have your boot time firmware actually populate this data, but you're not having it instead of So you're suggesting you can take data into the boot time How do you do it today? We put it in the boot Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But we use user space to read it out and publish it to the code. Yeah, that's good. So, I mean, there's, there's some of us that have firmware today that updates the device tree. Ubit will do that, right? Yep. You have memory yeah. and boot arts and stuff like that. That reminds me of something I did want to ask about. So, the memory node and size, one of the things that pretty much unconditionally Ubit will do is say, I figured out that this board has so many megabytes of memory, I'm going to update the node and say, here's how much is there. This is great because lots of boards have either your power PC, they just say, well, base zero, size zero, we're going to expect and rely on an update pack. Or people are lazy and copy and paste and all the bases here, size is 128 megabytes. Or people that want to tell the world that their new platform is going to support 14 to run instead of 2. Or people don't want the kernel to use all that memory, they might want to use it for something else. Right. Like a so coprocessor or... Well, we have CMA for that. Yeah. So, so you didn't support the kernel to today, one. today, we pretty much blindly always say, let's go ahead and we figured out the board currently has so many megs, we're going to update the property thus, and people need to lock that off or whatever, CMA, blah, blah, blah. Let's get to the kernel and do whatever it needs to do. We're going to say, this is how much we found. <laughs> But you There's think problems around. with that, like you're about to say, well, what if we have more memory than you can easily probe, or what but if we just really need to have a different value in there and we know that DT is correct? That sounds like an implementation detail for you, but... Yeah. Or you <laughs> well, I'm trying you didn't to figure it out because the board file says how much memory you have, so you compiled it in. That's not really figuring it out. It should only override if it's zero, if the size is zero. But lots of farm boards today Let's fix that. intentionally lock. Let's fix that. Okay. Stop lying. What's the problem? All of you. <laughs>
you want to suggest the default to provide, say, zero, or just zero, zero is not very safe. Uh, yeah, because you, you may have a dim slope, and then you don't know uh, how much money you're doing, and you just can not know. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with being expected to be providing correct value. I'm just saying that a lot of values today are bogus, and people are relying on the fact, possibly unknowingly, that their best free value has been corrected for them. Go ahead and change your boot and in five years and when there's rebates that you would free. So I actually just I actually just noticed this on the the pit device tree that got sent up is that Samsung threw up a device tree that included the memory node. And I believe that's because they have some people using a U-boot that doesn't properly calculate <coughs> things. Because they, they have a stale, really, really old U-boot. They right? have a stale old U-boot, and so they put up a device tree and they said it has two gigs of RAM. And you know some of these don't have two gigs; they have more. And yeah. it happens to work on the U-boot that's on here because it overrides it and it says, "Hey, no, you don't have two gigs; you have three and a half." So should I knack their patch and say, "Hey, no, please send up a device tree that that puts zero? I think we will probably want to sweep. Well, we can't just sweep the current because we can't take away. We don't know which ones are lying or not. So it would need to be a gradual thing. We need to catch it when we know it. I can yell at them. Yeah, yell at them. I didn't know I was supposed to. Keep in mind this is something new, right? Right, sure. Yep. <laughs> Anything else? With regards to the device trees and, and the, the bindings not being stable, it feels like, in particular, when if somebody wants to ship a device tree, but they don't know the binding is stable because you know, they might get rejected on the street, it feels like there's a finite. And eventually it's going to stabilize, and then there's probably a finite number of cores. Cores, isn't there some way that we can map them later on so that you know we identify what the core is, and there's some way that you know Red Hat or what other distribution is able to find <coughs> mapping to what the current set of bindings is? That works only for boards that have already shipped, but it doesn't work right for, for newer boards. Right? It doesn't work for traditional. If you do a mapping. No, but if you, for the newer boards, they would also include the device tree that would, they would be correct for the latest. Part of the problem is that there are, there are manufacturers out there that turn, so we know that the reference device tree from vendor X is wrong, and we know that these three boards that shipped with it in the past are wrong when you fix them up. But the fourth board and the fifth and the sixth and the seventh are all going to base on the same broken device tree from the vendor that has been and they're gonna change in the future, right? So it doesn't, it solves it for old ones, yeah, for older ones, just like for stable ones, you know, but it doesn't solve for the future. There's something, some, some things you know you can find. Right. Sorry, one more. <laughs> Last one. Very quick one is, how is uh, the DT binding Yeah. 
the learning of the convention is then the key question to ask is does this describe the hard life? And you start with that. Does that get you a long way? If you have one property from a <coughs> book device, Yeah, 
and no, we have one. And then you're going to tell me, yeah, because it's a stabilization period, and, and we're going to well, do complete one day. But that's never the case. You usually do something that's platform specific, and then you re realize the other guys have the same issue, and the other guys have the same issue, and you do something common. You agree on a common binding, and you want to move to it, and share code. And the entire business stability is going completely against that. that part, of the problem, part of the solution is to keep the legacy driver around. Right?
like, why did you add the body that early? Before the subsystem was <laughs> 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 Wait for the bindings before the <laughs> Thank you.